The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. All those able, please rise for our call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us pray. Bless, O oh God. Bless us, O oh God, with a reverent sense of your presence, that we may be at peace and may worship you with all our mind and spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. deceiving ourselves and the truth would not be in us. Together, let us confess our sins before God and one another using the prayer printed in your bulletin, followed by a time of silent confession. Let us pray. God, in the light of your love, we see the harm we have done to family and friends. In the light of your love, we see the suffering we have caused, the bad choices we have made, and the truth that we have shunned. 
heal us of our sin, wash us in your mercy, and feed us with your grace, so that we may follow your way and live the good news of the gospel. Amen. Beloved, hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you and I are forgiven in Jesus Christ and be at peace. Amen. given us in Christ, we also ought to forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. What a beautiful thing it is to see the people of God passing the peace of Christ. I hope it is your prayer on a regular basis that this peace of Christ will transcend our world, a world so obviously desperate for peace. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We hope and pray that our service is meaningful to your faith. At this time, please take a moment to sign the pew register, and if need be, pass the register down, and I will call your attention to some of the announcements that can be found on the insert in the bulletin. First, please take note of the white insert, Discovering God's Vision for Your Life. This is a class coming up on how to discover your spiritual gifts and greater meaning in your life. Please take a peek at that. We just finished having our first ever Meet Your Deacon Sunday in the Fellowship Hall, and I think it was a resounding success. There were lots and lots of people there. So thank you to, for, uh, to our diaconate. We're coordinating that. Please note that next Sunday, following both the 8.30 and the 11 a.m. services, there will be a question and answer time immediately following the benediction to talk about the capital campaign, which we are beginning. It's a much needed capital campaign, and I know some of you have questions, and we will have someone present ready with answers for those questions. Note that next Sunday, during this service, we will have a very brief congregational meeting to elect a new deacon, a new trustee, and a new member of the Congregational Nominating Committee. There are a lot of other announcements in the Goldenrod insert front and back. Please take time to peruse that. At this time, I'd like to invite the children forward for a moment with Ms. With McCarthy. Good morning. Come on up, children. Come join me. How are you guys doing today? Good. Um, well, I want to share something with you. Um, did you know that a long time ago, if you wanted to get on the internet, you had to have a wire that connected your computer to a hole in the wall, and that took you to the internet? Did you know that? Well, now we don't have that anymore. We have something called Wi-Fi. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of Wi-Fi. Maybe you heard your parents talk about Wi-Fi, or they're saying, why isn't the Wi-Fi working in the house? Well, Wi-Fi is an invisible connection. 
right? It allows us to get to the places that we need on the internet, right? Without any cords. Today, Pastor Hunter is going to be talking about faith, all right? And I want you guys to think of faith like Wi-Fi. There's two ways that I can think of that faith is like Wi-Fi. Number one, it's invisible. Can't see it. Can you? No, it's like radio waves floating out in the space. Number two, it connects us to the thing that we need. And as Christians, what we need is our God, right? So the next time that you go to get the iPad or the tablet, you want to play a game or you want to stream Netflix or whatever it is that you want to do, I want you to remember that your faith is like that Wi-Fi, right? It's connecting you to the Lord and you can't see it. Right? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us our faith that connects us to you. Please be with these children and their families as they go through their weeks of school and work and just carrying on. May we always bring glory to your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Don't forget to grab your worship bags if you would like one. approach God's word with prayer. Dear God, we ask that as your word is proclaimed, you would open our ears, open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to receive what you have to say to us today. We pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Our first lesson today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 45, verses 1 through 15. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it. And the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson comes from the book of Romans, letter to the Romans, Romans 11, 33 through 36. 
Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are God's judgments how, and how inscrutable are his, God's ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been God's counselor? Or who has given a gift to God to receive a gift in return? For from God and through God and to God are all things. To God be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson, the one that is appointed for this Sunday, comes to us from the gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter, verses 21 through 28. And this is the text from which today's sermon is taken. <coughs> Hear now the Holy Gospel. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I think about faith a lot, probably because I spend a lot of time talking with people about their faith or lack thereof. This past week I had a conversation with just such a person. They were questioning their faith in God after last week's events in, Char in Charlottesville. This conversation with that person has left me wondering why some people have great confidence in God while others of us struggle for scraps. The book of Hebrews in the New Testament tells us that faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of those things we cannot see. For some of us, it is difficult to accept what we cannot see because it defies reason. But faith, at least biblical faith, does not ask us to deny our reason, only to place our reason in someone greater than reason. Confidence, confidence in someone greater than reason is exactly what we encounter in our gospel lesson. The gospel lesson says that Jesus entered a region of Tyre and Sidon, which is sort of like saying Jesus entered the red light district for Jews. It was a pagan area, totally non-Jewish. 
We're told that as soon as Jesus enters this area, a non-Jewish, unnamed Canaanite woman somehow knew about his powers and approached him. The unnamed woman shouts at Jesus to have mercy on her because her daughter, also unnamed, is tormented by a demon. The disciples, ever protective of their rock star, tell him to, oh, just dismiss her. But he doesn't. And to her credit, the unnamed woman will not be dismissed, but implores Jesus, saying, help me. The woman kneels in the dust before Jesus. And kneeling, at least in the Gospel of Matthew, is always an indication of both power and kingship. Think about the Magi in the second chapter of Matthew kneeling before the baby Jesus. Anyhow, this unnamed Canaanite woman understands what almost everyone else in the Gospel has yet to grasp. Jesus is not just hope for Israel, but hope for everyone. Hope for her, hope for her daughter, hope for you, hope for me, hope for the healing of a nation divided by race and class and political ideology. Hope. But then we come to the really hard part of this lesson. Honestly, I wish I had a pair of scissors and I could just cut it out of the Bible. It's one of the most difficult scenes of any gospel story. Jesus speaks words to this unnamed Canaanite woman that don't sound like words Jesus should speak to anyone, especially a desperate mother. He says, it's not fair to take the children's food. By this he means miracles for the Jews. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Dogs, in this context, refers to Gentile pagans. Dogs refers to the unnamed Canaanite woman. It is, as far as we can tell, an insult. In light of what happened last week in Charlottesville, Virginia, we must remind ourselves that hatred and prejudice and bigotry is wrong. We must remind ourselves that Jesus constantly condemned people and systems that diminished human beings because we are all made in the image of God. So why then we might wonder, did Jesus say what he said to the unnamed Canaanite woman? Well, if I had an answer for that, I'd be a rich man. We don't know. The gospel does not tell us why he said what he said. But don't all human beings at one time or another think or use unkind words? Don't we all use stereotypes? And we are quick to forget that Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. We like to forget sometimes the human part. But to her credit, to her credit, the unnamed woman offers a retort to Jesus that is smart and quick. She says to Jesus, 
Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And what does Jesus do? Well, the woman's response, at least from the text, appears to have changed Jesus' outlook. Because all of a sudden, he praises the woman's faith. He praises the faith of a pagan Canaanite woman. And this is the only time in the entire gospel where Jesus says of anyone, including the disciples, great is your faith. This should give us pause. Why? Why is her faith great? Because she is determined? Because she is vulnerable? Because she is honest? Because she is confident? Because she is smart? Because she recognizes who Jesus is? Because she breaks the social barriers of her day and approaches him? We don't know why her faith is great. We only know that Jesus praises her faith, and this is the only time in the whole gospel where he says of anyone, great is your faith. Maybe, maybe the Canaanite woman's story is not about what faith is or is not. Maybe, just maybe, the Canaanite woman's faith is great because she lives out her faith. Maybe her faith is great because she puts all of her confidence in the right person not the wrong things. As I have shared with many of you, my own faith journey has been one of ups and downs, sometimes a lot of faith, and sometimes not enough faith. Faith does not come easy to everyone, which is why faith is a gift. But this much I have learned from scripture and experience. Faith is as faith does. Faith is as faith does. And there is no better example of doing faith than what we see in the life of the Canaanite woman. In that moment, kneeling in the dust before Jesus, her whole life defined her faith, and her faith defined her whole life. So, how about you? What does your life say about your faith? And what does your faith say about your life? To God be the glory today and for all eternity. Amen.
remain standing and, in, and join me in affirming our historic faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us bring before God our prayers for ourselves, our loved ones, the church, and the whole world. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for every blessing you have poured out on us, on our families, and on our church. We ask that you would lead us in your truth and life and show us how to follow you more faithfully, that we would be a light to this city and to all people around us. We pray for the church universal, that filled with the Holy Spirit, we would do the work of your kingdom in the world, and that we would be unified as one having the same love and purpose. We pray for the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed, wherever they are all over the world. Provide for them, God, comfort them, sustain them, and deliver them out of the hands of their oppressors. We lift up the places in the world, both in our community and elsewhere, where there is violence, hatred, prejudice, and chaos. Lord, let your peace and understanding rule in those places, Bring healing to the victims and help those who seek you in those places to respond with wisdom, compassion, and courage. Lord, we pray for all those with mental illnesses and physical ailments and diseases, for all those with addictions and for those who are crushed in spirit. Let your presence surround them and your healing hand touch them and lift them up. We pray all this in faith and in the name of your son Jesus, knowing that you hold the world in your hands and trusting that you hear us. And now we offer to you the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into temptation, but uh, forgive us our debts, I'm sorry, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it is better to give than it is to receive. Let us return to God a portion of that which he has entrusted to our care.
you do not have a spiritual home and you are looking for a Christian fellowship, then we invite you to join with us as we seek to be faithful to Jesus Christ. I charge you now to go into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul. And may the grace of God be upon you this day and throughout all eternity. Amen. Amen. Thank you.